Welcome to this very personal class. It's a joy to see you, and we appreciate your attendance, and we thank our great host of friends in the world of television for joining us in studying one of the greatest uh, subjects in the Bible. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke more about demons and demon power than he did uh, about heaven. And if he felt that he could deal with that subject, certainly he expects us to. And most emphatically, uh, when he uh, placed it so strong in the last command he ever gave. And also, when he chose 12 disciples, he gave them direct authority to deal with the subject. When he chose 70 other disciples, he gave them explicit authority to deal with the subject. And then in the Great Commission, which relates to you, uh, he gave direct authority to deal with the subject. Therefore, uh, you have uh, a right to deal with it. We are teaching the class from uh, teaching syllabi that I prepared myself called Demons and Deliverance, Principalities and Powers. Uh, we would be very happy for you to have the teaching syllabi yourself and, and work from it. We don't claim that it's the ultimate. We want to say that it is a textbook and a starter. And therefore, we have left the pages on the left-hand side free for you to do your worksheet on in order that you might cause it to grow. And this lesson, which is lesson 21 in this series of lessons on principalities and powers, um, in, this, in this lesson we're dealing with seven steps toward uh, demon possession. Now, the, the purpose in naming this uh, lesson by this name is that the devil seldom ever takes a life suddenly and overwhelmingly. Normally, it's pinch by pinch and inch by inch that he takes over a human life. And uh, he slowly grows upon that person. Now, we want to show you some areas to where if you permit them to come into your life, it becomes an open door for the devil to walk in and take your life over stronger and stronger. We believe that the people are forewarned, that they are then forearmed, and they will understand that the problem they're having is from a satanic source, and that they should resist it, repulse it, and destroy it. That's the purpose. And this seven steps uh, toward demon possession, we feel we must state again that the subject of demon power is not popular in some pulpits, and that in some religious circles it is never discussed, whatever. Many, many simply that call themselves Christians do not even believe in the existence of devils. They think it's a bad, a bad dream, or they think it's a, uh, a negative subject, or that it's a, a Santa Claus, you know. It's something you talk about, but it really doesn't exist. In other circles, the subject is simply taboo. It does not come up, and if it does, it comes up in mockery and in laughter and not in sincerity, and for sure, not in delivering someone from the power of the evil one. I have noticed that the less that the Church of Jesus Christ speaks and talks and exposes demons, that the less we expose them, the more they control and assume uh, power and authority over human destiny. Uh, they, it is only when we pull the drapes back and we expose demon power that we can honestly, sincerely set people free from the power of the devil. Therefore, this subject, as I have said, is so important. The church is living far beneath its privileges and also its duty to stand up on God's side to do what God wants it to do. I am addressing myself to those who claim to be Christians. I'm also addressing myself to those who've already been entrapped in Satan's power that we have come in this program to set you free by God's mighty power. It does not take a long time. It does take sincerity. It does take faith in God. If you will sincerely leave and depart from the works of the devil and, and resist the devil, you can be free. There is no human that cannot be free. Anyone, everyone can be free. In our nation today, and I don't understand this, our Christian people have been taught to fear the devil. It's a sad situation, and it shows a very weak pulpit. 
if the, if the men in the pulpit are supposed to be the captains, if they're supposed to be the generals of the, of the army of God, then they are to blame because they have taught their, their foot soldiers to be afraid of the enemy that they are going to pursue. <laughs> Isn't that something? And no wonder they, they like to sing songs like, Hold the Fort, Hold the Fort. Well, I want to tell you something. Christians don't hold anything. Christians turn loose everything. Uh, we knock down forts. We destroy forts. We walk in on the devil's territory and devastate him. We walk into areas in the islands of the sea and in the subcontinents of the world where he has ruled for so long, and we say, Thus far and no further, saith the Lord God Almighty, and your power ceases here, and God's authority takes over. And he doesn't like that kind of treatment. But God wants a marching army of strength and power and devotion today. He's looking for you. We need one million new teachers in this land to teach truth. God needs them right now. And that's the purpose of teaching these, that we shall know the truth. We don't understand how in, in today's world that modern Christians should be cowards, that they should be afraid of their enemy, and that they, they don't even want to talk about him, their enemy. And, and so when they come against him, they don't understand how to win victories over him. We have even some ministers that are afraid of the word Satan, and they don't want to use it and don't understand it. And, and they don't even know how to overcome the enemy, and not only of their own souls, but of the, of the parish where God has made them responsible. No place in the Word of God, not one time, does God teach us to be afraid of the devil. The Bible does teach us to resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Jesus Christ didn't say that we should run from Satan. It says we should run toward him. Just like David overcoming Goliath, we should throw the stone of faith and sock him, and down he goes, cut off his head, and that's the end of that terror. It, it's gone. It's gone. But we have to know that this thing is a reality that we're talking about. It's not a dream. It, it's not a fantasy that we're talking about what actually exists in the world that we live in today. The Great Commission of the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us that they that have faith shall cast out devils. We want you to have faith and we want you to do it. Christians do possess divine authority from our Lord Jesus Christ to exercise evil spirits. I was asked to be on a national talk show as an exorcist, and I said, well, I, I will if you will explain that every Christian is an exorcist. They said, we don't believe that. I said, it's not what you believe, it's what the Bible says. The Bible says in the Great Commission that they that have faith shall cast out devils. And if you'll put it on that basis, I'll come. They says, no, we want it that only you can do it. And I said, well, that would be a lie, so I cannot perform a lie for you. Any person that believes in Jesus Christ and has the Lord as your Savior, you have the divine authority to cast forth evil, and God give you strength to do it in Jesus' name. We have no reason whatsoever to be afraid of any kind of demon force or any kind of demon power. Uh, we're told in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 and verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in Jehovah, in the Lord, in the, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in, in the high places. Wherefore, wherefore, take it. Under you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. In this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is teaching that our warfare is not in the flesh. We're not, in, we're not to fight men and women, but we are to fight powers of darkness in high places. Paul said further in 2 Corinthians 10 and, and 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now that is the warfare of the Christian. It cannot be moved. In, in any other direction. I say that there are possibly seven steps. In your case, it might be eight or nine. In your case, it might be five. We don't say that these are steps that have to be taken, but these are steps that are taken 
and I wish to deal with each one of them progressively. I will name them first. The first one is called, that I call, regression. Now, regression simply means a reversion to earlier behavior patterns. It means to go backward. Regression. When you regress, you back up. Our lives are not backward lives. Our lives are forward lives. And any time that you, sh you stop moving forward, then the, the devil causes you to move backward. God wants you to move forward. The Bible says the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter under the perfect day. And so you don't go duller and duller and nuttier and nuttier. <laughs> that is simply not true. It is not true. All right, a regression. And the second step on a downward pattern we call repression. The word repression means to restrain. It means to squeeze. It means to prevent natural expression. It means to keep down. It means to hold back. When you become repressed, the devil has an open door to come in and work further things in your heart and your life. You must not regress. You must not be become repressed. You must not. You must not. You must express everything that God has put within you. When it's time to laugh, laugh. When it's time to cry, cry. And it's kind of time to jump, jump. Don't be repressed. The third step down is what we call suppression. Suppression means to press under. It means to keep back. It means to conceal. It means an exclusion of desire and feeling when you are suppressed. God does not want you suppressed. You might say, well, those are fairly close together. That's exactly what I told you. The devil takes over lives just a pinch by a pinch. He takes over more and more in our lives. We have to stop him from taking over our life. The next one is a long jump. It is called depression. To be depressed means to be low in spirit. It means to have gloominess. It means to have dejection. It means to have sadness. It, it is a decrease in force or activity in your personal life. It is an emotional condition, either neurotic or psychotic. It is characterized by feelings of hopelessness or inadequacy. And so when you become depressed, you have opened a door for Satan to move further and further into your life. Remember, I say this very strongly, that if you go to bed sad and you wake up sad, you are not well, you're sick, and you need to get a hold of yourself and say, wait a minute, why? Am I depressed? What caused this depression and caused it to leave? It does not matter about what happens to you. It only matters how you react to what happens to you. And if you can remember that, and if you can stick with that, what a blessing, what a help it can be. The number five step in the downward road is what we call oppression. It's a way down from depression. Oppression means pressure with power to crush. It means the power to smother. It means to overpower another power. It means to overwhelm. It means to harass. It means to ravish. It means to rape. Oppression. Oppression. The Bible says that the Lord, that God sent the Lord Jesus to this earth, that he might heal those who are oppressed of the devil. That means they're under pressure to crush them. That means that he's come to smother them, to overpower them, overwhelm them. The sixth one is what we call obsession, and it is a long distance from oppression. In the first five, you can deliver yourself. You can say, wait a minute, I refuse to be this way, and you can turn the faucet of joy and peace on within your soul and flood yourself with it, and you would be free. When you come to the number six one, to oppression, you have a problem with your mind, and you cannot, you cannot at that point deliver yourself you're unable to, uh, to cope with the situation, and you need outside help from another minister. Because obsession means to besiege. It means to haunt as of evil spirits. It means to be fixed on a single idea or an unreasonable degree of, something, of some kind. When you can't talk about one thing, and when your mind stays loaded on one thing, and you become obsessed, obsessed with that thing, uh, 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 then, then uh, your mind is not straight. Your friends become your enemies, and, and your, your best friends, your, your loved ones, uh, become those that are against you. And so you, you find yourself in a very sad state uh, of situation. So obsession, 
obsession, it means that your mind is no longer clear, it's no longer right, and you need outside help. Then you are very close to the last one. You are close to a state of possession. Uh, uh, to possess means to inhabit. It means to occupy. It means to control. It means to hold as a property. It means to dominate. It means to actuate. It means to rule uh, by extraneous forces. Now, I do not suggest for one moment that in every case the devil moves and assaults through these exact seven steps because I have dealt with this problem all over the world and it has not been that way. We know that there are stages and that they, and that they become readily evident in your own life if you understand the things that we're talking about. That it might be well that there are some intermediate steps that I haven't even suggested as yet and that will not be discussed in this syllabus. And so uh, there could be other things uh, other than this. I only know this, that the devil wants to take over any life, every life on the face of this earth. But you have to yield to him for him to do that. I have, I have talked to those who were completely possessed by the devil, and God had set them free. And I've asked them if they obeyed the devil when they were possessed. I have not found even one that said, yes, I obeyed. Every one of them said, no, I hated him. I, I disobeyed. When he told me to do this, I quarreled with him. I said, I would not do it. You say, well, why could they do that? And how could they do it if they were possessed? Because they have a will. God invested you with a will inside of your solical parts. God will not trespass against that will, and the devil cannot. God will not take it from you, and the devil can't have it. You can resist him the longest day you live and say, I will not do what you want me to do, and then you do not have to do it. He has no compulsory power. He only has lying power. He only has suggestive power. And the Bible still says resist, and he will have to flee. What a great and amazing truth uh, that is. And so if there are cases that, are, uh, that, are, uh, that appear different, and then what we are discussing and talking about, uh, you may have a, a progression outline that's different from this. Uh, we just want you to know that these are ways that he could do it. So based upon my experience and my study, I believe that most people who become possessed travel down uh, the ruinous road, similar to what we are discussing in these lessons. And so in these terrible steps uh, of the devil dominating your life and controlling your life, we want you to learn what they are, and how to resist them. Most of the time, people are possessed through ignorance. We find, that, we find that on mission fields around the world. Most people do not want to be possessed of the devil. They were caught, they were entrapped, they were ensnared, and they don't know how to get out. And so you have to lift them out by the power of Jesus, and always they are glad to be free. It's, it's so much better to be on Jesus' side than it is on the devil's side. Let me stress that the devil seldom takes a life all at one grab. And I've said it before, so I wish to re restate it, please. Uh, he does it, he takes anyone's life over a little at a time and a step at a time. Sometimes, sometimes he's able to assume complete control very rapidly because we agree rapidly and we let down our resistance rapidly. But most often, it is a slow process over a period of, of sometimes weeks, months, and sometimes even, even years. Now, let us go and, and, and look at these seven steps for a few moments, and let me see if I can bless you and help you. And the first one we call regression. I call this the first step uh, when, the, when the devil attacks a human personality uh, because uh, he doesn't like advancement. He doesn't like progress. <laughs> you can't find anywhere in the world where he ever had any progress or where, where he had any advancement. Look at countries that have given themselves totally over to him, uh, India, uh, Tibet, uh, th th these countries that, have, uh, that serve him so faithfully. Uh, you no, know, no, they've had, they've had to be helped by people that believe in God. I mean one God, uh, the, the true God. They have, been had to, they have needed help. They haven't given help. They have had to give help. You see, uh, that's in the world that we live in today. Uh, you all know it, you read it in the newspapers, you see it on your television, you know uh, that what we're speaking about. It is a human battle against, against God-given abilities of release and expression. And we, 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 must, we, we must, from the very beginning of our lives, know that we're in a progressive line and we never cease. And it's amazing to me 
how some people, when they get up 40, 50 years old, they start saying, I'm losing my mind. Bad confessions are terrible things. You must never do it in Jesus' name. God does not want you to do such a thing. Your mind should go stronger and stronger until you die. Your mind is not like your face to wrinkle. It is not. Your, your mind is a development process, and it can get keener and keener. Some of the greatest minds the world has ever known were men in their 80s and 90s. Some men governed the world in their 80s and 90s. Others were masters of art and sculpture at 80 and 90. And, and so your, your mind does not deteriorate unless you permit it to. God wants you to grow stronger and stronger unto that, to that perfect day. To regress in the human personality is to go backward. And we are speaking very strongly in spirituality and you say, might say moral, moral uh, powers and, uh, and uh, the things that are significant and, and making you the man that, and the woman that you are. And, and that's where it is. It's an inward situation uh, that we're discussing. And so we want your spiritual forces and your spiritual powers to grow and to increase and never to regress, never to go backward. Uh, it's a pity you says, I used to be a deacon, I, I, I used to be a song leader, I used to be a Sunday school teacher, but I'm nothing now. That's what we call regression. And you're on the wrong road. You're on the road down and the road back, and you're on the road where you can be hurt uh, and, and your destiny. You're on the road for these, these other control spots to be appearing in your life. The human person, the human personality is built for progress. God did it. It is built for advancement. The Lord did it. It's, been, it's built for learning, learning more. <laughs> Every day should be a learning process. Uh, every day of your life should be a learning. When you stop learning, uh, you're regressing. God wants you to go forward in Jesus' name. So when this goes into reverse, it is the first warning signal. It's the first red flag uh, of, the, of a negative power that is evident in your life and you should not permit it to be there. This can be resisted, it can be overcome, it can be destroyed. You see how? First, by finding God. You, come, you get God into your heart. But then you say, but there's some Christians that do that. Then they don't praise. Neighbors, until you learn to praise God, you cannot enter, you cannot enter into the greatness of God. David says, I enter into his courts with praise. Praise is such a strong factor. Praise, and then prayer. I don't, I don't mean bedtime prayers, good night, Jesus, and good morning, Jesus. No, I mean intercessory prayer. I mean talking to God. I mean uh, praying for missions and praying for churches and praying for pastors and praying for evangelists and becoming a stalwart, praying for prosperity, praying, reaching out to God. And when you do that, you don't go backwards. There's no way to go backwards when you're going forwards. <laughs> they, don't, they don't function at the same time. So the first step of the devil taking over our life is what we call regression. Don't ever get caught in it, in Jesus' name. The, the second one is even greater than that. We call it repression, repression. Now, regression can come just from you, or it can be someone knocks your, you know, your, your, your props out from under you and you go tumbling. Uh, that's bad too. You should be standing on your own strength. Re repression oftentimes comes from the outside. It, it is a second step in the seven steps that the devil uh, takes you on a downward march. It's most interesting to me that God makes every human an expressionist. <laughs> You're going to get that. That the moment a baby is born, the doctor spanks it. He wants expression. He demands expression. If he doesn't get it, he pronounces the baby dead. You see, he pronounces it dead. No expression. And, and, and he, he, he must have it. God desires exuberant expression from every one of us. He wants our eyes to talk. He wants our faces uh, to light up. He makes us to express everything. He makes us express something he wants you to express. Anyone who represses that function is doing the work of the devil. It don't matter if it's a father or a mother or where you work or where. God is the great expressionist. God is. In the Bible, any time a prophet or apostle looked into heaven, there was a great movement with singing and praising of God all through heaven. There was expression up there. There was no repression in heaven. God wants human expression. The devil doesn't want it. The devil is wicked and he is miserable. He has no joy and he knows no happiness and no expression of peace. Uh, therefore, to repress a person is to destroy their natural expression which God gave them when he was born. 
and to repress a person, to restrain that person from without is a wrong thing to do for anybody. To express a person, to repress a personality, a child, or a neighbor, or a husband, or a wife, takes away the joy and gladness out of that life. God did not create human lives to be restrained by abnormal environment. 